I am ready to go. Camera's a little too close, but let's see what I can do about moving it back a little bit. Thanks to those of you who are joining me. This is your short and snappy Pilates class with the foam roller. No, <laughs> with the light hand weights on Friday. I'm like right up against the wall here. Ooh. So I've got both of my weights beside me, and if you're joining and you don't have your hand weights, be sure to have maybe a can of soup or some heavy beans or something. <laughs> and starting with a deep breath. Inhale through the nose, and then using the exhale to close down through the ribs. As we get started, settle in and sit up nice and tall. As you inhale, there is an inflation at the rib cage. Be sure that you're closing the ribs down. I'm picking up one hand weight and leaning to the side. Notice that from this point is when you experience the stretch. As you return here, um, we'll just call it like the zero, and this is the negative. Coming all the way up, and then the stretching begins, the benefits reaped in the side stretch, and return upright. We'll go again. This time, I'll come up and over, twisting and turning with both hand weights on the floor, both hands on the floor. As I push into the floor, whew, rotate a little farther and farther. As you untwist, you'll pick up your weight and then return to the upright position. This will be arm number two, lifting right from 12 o'clock and then the stretching begins. Return to the upright position. We'll go again. This is arm lifting, stretching, bending, lengthening, and return. Get ready. This time we'll come up and over, and as you exhale, turn and spiral. My hands are on the floor. Push against the floor to pull your ribs up and back. The head is heavy. Untwist, and then return upright. Bring the hand weight behind you and hold on with both hands. Inhale. Using the exhale, straighten your arms while holding on to the weights. As you repeat, inhale, pulling the shoulders back, strongly pulling the shoulders back, sinking your head down. We'll do one more with emphasis on your head, nice and heavy. Drop your weights, ah, drop your weights and bring the arms all the way up. Now I'm leaning forward, reaching without bending, reach. I'm lowering my arm, making a slash like the letter X and returning upright. Here's the other arm, a diagonal slash, like making the letter X. Notice my spine does a little rotation, and then return. Stretch those arms, here's the last slash, return, and come backward all the way upright, and release. As we repeat the roll down and roll up exercises, starting from the end of the mat, have your hand weights nearby, one on each side. Holding on to the uh, backs of your thighs, using your abdominals, come all the way back. Inhale. Raise your arms and head, shoulders. Hold on to the backs of the thighs if necessary. Inhale. Scoop your abdominals strongly. Remember to go ahead and hold on if it is necessary. Inhale. Arms lifting, head lifting, rolling, holding on if necessary. Using the hand weights, experience the difference. With your arms stretched out, that changes the leverage. It's a little bit of physics that I really don't want to explain. As you exhale, benefit from the hand weights. Pull your abdominals in, round it through the spine. Soften the landing and inhale. Raise your arms, head, shoulders, pull your way up, and straighten the legs. Begin by pulling the abdominals in and rounding back, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Take extra special care when your arms go back here. Raise the arms, head, shoulders, and reach past your feet, bringing your head with you. You can place the weights down, but don't let go. You'll need them. Come back with your weights, coming back with your hand weights. Arrive with a soft landing, and again, take care of your shoulder and rotator cuff. 
Raise the arms, head, feel your spine bending and becoming more and more bendy as you come forward. Rest the weights, but don't let go. Come back and come back with the C curve and stop when you're halfway. Turn toward me with your hand weights near the chest. Turn away as you exhale, go. Inhale through the center using exhale. Inhale through the center and using exhale. Coming to the center, going backwards as I stretch my arms out long. Moving in slow motion will heighten your awareness. As you exhale, blow, stretch those legs, legs. You've got more time to turn on, more muscles. Reach, resting the hands momentarily. Come backward and coming back, bring your hand weights to your chest. Turn away from me, rotate. Inhale through the center. This is rotation number two and rotate. We still have three and four. Here is rotation number four. Coming to center, make your way back, elongate your arms and legs. Inhale, rolling up. Now this time I am rolling up, literally reach up, reach up, but look straight forward. Coming back, another C curve, deep in the abdominals, rounding back. We'll do the last one, rolling up toward the ceiling, rolling up, and arrive seated nice and tall. As I come back about halfway, I'll bend one knee into the chest. Make sure that you didn't try to flatten your back, stay scooped and heavy in the abdomen, and lift the leg number two. As you alternate legs, alternate legs, try to maintain your balance. In other words, try not to look at the screen the whole time where you're completely tilted or askew. Coming back, placing your ribs, only ribs, what? Ribs on the floor. Continue here. This is just four, three, two, one. I'm bringing the away arm to the front combining the weights by lacing my fingers. And when I reach, I want to reach past my leg, but not sideways up to my head. Forward with a little twist. Forward past my thighs. Forward. I can see the end of my mat. You can add the reciprocating legs. And just three more. Smile with it. <laughs> Two more. And on the last one, I will rest, resting the head. Bring your head back, and then we'll do the other leg. I'm starting with my head up. Reach and reach. <laughs> As you reach, stay grounded and heavy through the hips. My arms are nice and long. Reach every time. And from here, we've got three more, and two more, and last one, head down and rest. Nicely done. Good work. With your head down, you're gonna wanna stretch out your low back and rest. The next exercise is called doubles, uh, sorry, you know what, let's start with heel taps, and then we'll go to double straight leg, because they are related in this way. Mechanically, my thigh is going away, and thigh returning up. Leg number two, heel tap, return. Now we call the return position the tabletop. And so you can be in a nice flat shin, which, in which the shins are parallel with the floor. This is tabletop. This exercise, as I mentioned already, is the introductory version of what will soon be double legs, uh, double straight legs. Legs are closed, I'm continuing the same exercise and my legs are closed. My thighs are going forward, kneecaps, aim away, kneecaps toward the ceiling. Kneecaps, like double, you know, old-fashioned cannons from the Civil War. My cannons The same exercise with straight legs implies that the legs go away, but there is no heels to tap the floor. 
This is still my thighs, like double twin cannons or missiles, going forward, 45 degree angle from the pelvis. Return to seal. Now if you turn your legs out so that you might look like Charlie Chaplin or Mary Poppins on the ceiling, you might be able to alleviate some of that over-recruitment at your psoas, your hip flexors. So as I bladder on, we'll do one more. Hug your knees into your chest. A very welcome stretch in the low back. Another very welcome stretch in the low back comes from rollover. And as the name would imply, I am rolling over backwards. Are you ready? As you exhale, roll it. Now, use your hands. If you need to, use your hands. Pick up your pelvis and pull your pants up. Get your legs down close to the face, and it's likely, more than likely, that your knees are probably bent, dangling over your face. So stretch the legs and let gravity pull your feet down, down, down. Slowly rolling down. Take your time. I'm gonna scoot down just a little bit so it doesn't look like my feet disappeared. Here I go again, knees bent to start. Roll over. <laughs> my toes are right there. Take your time. Notice I am not using my hands this time. Coming backward very slowly, one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Now, I'm going to show you a variation in which you could be successful. I mean, you may be successful using the weights, but my weights will be beyond my head and on the floor. So they're on my palms and I'm not lifting, but they might assist. As I exhale, oh my God, that was so easy. <laughs> Keeping my arms down on the floor, I can still uh, get my hips up a little higher and toes, toes, tap the floor. Inhale, separate your feet and very slowly, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae. Control, 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 and control, and control some more. I'm keeping my arms here above my head on the floor, knees bent and legs straighten. Knees bend and knees straighten. In a moment, I'll be bending my elbows, retracting my arms down toward my torso. My head weight's just lifted from the floor. As I slow down, I can reach my arms and legs forward and back. Here's forward and back. Essentially, elbows, knees straighten, elbows, knees bend. Elbows, knees straighten, and the head comes along for the ride. Slow down. This will be my last one. I'll meet you at the top. Can you sit a little taller? Crisscross the ankles, just the ankles, and sit back. Ah, I won't make the end of my mat, so I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. Holding onto my hand weights, well I will be when I pull my pants up, holding onto the hand weights, we will be coming forward with the chest and head heavy, attempting to raise the arms. Now you're gonna find that to be a little awkward. Maybe we should do it without the hand weights first. So I am starting with my arms in front, opening my arms like I'm opening the curtains of a giant show. Hello! As I take a bow, my arms are behind me. I am attempting to lift my arms, let the arms come all the way around in a giant circle, which really isn't that big, and then return to the holding on to the vest kind of a position. Arms as you open the curtain, the arms go thumbs down and high above. The arms will continue in a circle and then you can begin to come back. Master the movement first. Open the curtain. Hello, I have arrived. Take a bow. 
arms fly up and over, kind of mimicking the butterfly stroke. If you were Michael Phelps and arrived, what would that feel like if I had some weights? Well, let's find out. So these hand weights are three pounds and three pounds and probably just a little too heavy. Be extra careful, be extra careful when the arms are behind you. I am opening the curtain, hello. I'm taking a bow and my arms are trying to lift high. As they come around to the front, ooh, pull back, sit back, sit up, then open the curtain. Dive your head down, take a bow. Oof. Arms come around. And then come on back. That moment as the arms are coming around should be heavy, all right? That should amplify the back stretch. Try it again. I'm sitting up, opening the curtain. Sit up, sit up, sit up, sit up. Ooh. Take a bow, arms up. Oof. Arms are forward, forward, heavy, 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 heavy. Pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Oh, last one. Open. Take a bow, arms come up, and I'll stay here with my weights on the floor, just outside my feet. My weights are down. I'm gonna hold on to my ankles and my feet and pull down. Don't pull, blow a breath. Coming backward and have a seat. We are sure we are blah, 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 to face down exercises. In the face down category, I'm having my hand weights down on each side, one on the left, one on the right side of the mat. <clears throat> All the way down by my hips. To get into position, align your legs parallel, parallel on your thighs, lifting and lowering your torso. Push down through your elbows and your forearms. You might be moving much slower than I. Much slower than me. I know there's some English majors out there that are correcting me, editing me in your mind. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, I got so stiff. All right, so here's my last one. I'm a little more limber now. Come on up, 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 up. And then come all the way down. I'm resting my forehead on my fist, and then grab one of your ankles, right at the top of your foot, you know, where your shoelaces would have been. Bending your elbow, and more importantly, push down through your pelvis. Really heavy, oh. I discovered that if I use something like a hand weight or a soft ball, I can elevate my thigh, elevating my thigh off the floor. As you can tell, my thighs are not, actually this thigh is not on the floor. This allows me to push down through my pelvis heavier. I'm gonna try it here. My knee is not heavy on the hand weight. My hip is heavy. Are you breathing? And then release. Ah. I'll be starting with the other leg. I did get a little head start, a little stretching. Oof. Breathe. And then I place the hand weight so that I'm able to Place my knee, it's not the actual knee knee, but you know what I mean, the bottom of the thigh. And then I recognize this is not comfortable. And so I am not pushing down on my knee, and instead I am pushing down through my hips and allow my knee to be light on that bar, light on the dumbbell bar. And then I'm going to let go and move the double going hand weight out of the way. I'll start with double leg kick. In the exercise double leg kick, you may or may not know, it is three kicks to the buttocks. Two legs, three kicks. One, two, three, stretch. So one, two, three, 
stretch. One, two, three, stretch. One, two, three, stretch. Again, one, two, three. Last one, kick, 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 and rest. Now, that's already challenging enough, but we're gonna include one hand weight, one. Hold on to the ends of the dumbbell as it crosses over your rear end. Your elbows should be soft during the kicks. So I'll demonstrate three, two, one. When the legs straighten, so do the arms. Notice I am trying to keep my wrists nice and straight. You don't need to coil your wrists up. You don't need to do this to hold onto a dumbbell, I'm sure. Try to manage long wrists. Okay, enough about that. Kick, kick, kick. Go. Kick, kick, kick. We go. Kick. Kick, kick, and kick, kick, kick. Last one. Stay, fluttering the legs. Keep energy at your butt. Lift, and then rest. Drop the weight and push back to rest. Oh. Those exercises are so challenging, and yet the benefits, the benefit of opening the back, opening uh, the chest, uh, strengthening those spine muscles, uh, those benefits will be with you for a long time, but you have to practice, you gotta do it. All right, the next exercise is called the bear claw because I'll be on my toes, but not my knees. But to make the exercise more challenging on Friday, since we have the hand weight, I place the hand weight behind my knee. Now, I have chosen the leg that is farther away from the camera, farther away from the camera, because I will be bringing that knee in front. I will be bringing this knee in front. And so I need it to start in the back. Here I am in the bear claw position with my dumbbell secured. I'm out of the camera shot. So here I am with my knees just hovering off the floor. From here, this back leg with the hand weight will lift several times. Lift several times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I fall on the sole of that foot and bring the leg with the hand weight. Lift, lift, lift lift, land on your hip and forearm. Use the back leg again, lift. So I brought my hip and my leg and the three pounds off the floor. Lift, lift, push through the grounded foot. And then you can come all the way down entirely, remove the hand weight and lie on your side. The hand weight could be placed on the side of your thigh if you want the extra weight, both legs, legs, legs. So research has shown that the inner thighs are always stronger than your outer thighs. And this is why I have chosen to put the hand weight on the outer thigh. I have seen people do this before with the hand weight on the inner thigh. And strengthening the inner thigh is, you know, it's noble and all, but uh, strengthening the outer thigh is more beneficial. I'm going to stay up. Slow motion scissor, slow scissor, slow scissor. Both of my legs are straight off the floor. Now my bottom leg will land with the knee bent and this weighted leg is in front. Hey, toe tap, toe tap, toe tap, toe tap, rest. Remove the weight and just roll back. Let your legs do what they may and continue to open across the chest. Come what may. Oh, breathe, breathe, breathe. All right, we don't have all day for breathing, so let's come on up. And I will be rotating my body around. I'm doing the hokey pokey and then I turn myself around. And then place the hand weight behind my knee. It is the leg farther away from the camera. I'm on my knuckles because I'm trying to keep my wrists neutral. 
Once I launch my feet, uh, feet on the floor, knees up. From here, I've got a good sense of balancing on my arm, arm, and foot. The leg lift down. Two, down. Three, down. Four. Oh my God, my belly is hanging. Five, it's actually my shirt. Six, seven. I'll keep the leg up on eight and I fall to the sole of my foot. This other leg is underneath me now. Lift, 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 lift. Come down to the hip and the forearm. Lift again. I am using the back leg. It's grounded. Lift my hip and my leg and my three pound weight. And then I'm down for the count. Remove the hand weight. Lie on your side, optional hand weight on the outer thigh. Both of my legs are straight when I begin. Lift. Oof, I was a little crooked there, so I had to straighten myself out. Yes. So I'm working on strengthening my outer thigh and hip, and I don't need to strengthen my inner thighs quite so much, and I would need more than three pounds anyway, to really challenge my inner thighs. Three pounds is enough here for my outer thighs. I'm pausing and in a slow motion scissoring action. You might also feel like a pedestrian that just got knocked over on your side and your pedestrian legs are still walking. My bottom leg is down on the floor. My top leg is in front of you. Hey, toe tap, boom, 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 boom. Down for the count, boom. No way. Roll that. <laughs> breathe, 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 breathe. Oh. So while you're in a resting position, the purposes of restoring and recharging are so you can let go of any muscle tension from the previous exercise, regenerate some energy to prepare for the next exercise. And in this case, bridging is next. So if you need to reorganize or reorient yourself, bridging is next. I'll turn in this direction so you can better see the pelvis. My hand weights will be one on each side. I'm ready. Plant your hand weights at the crease of your pelvis and be sure that it can be snug and nestled in that cr cr crease, in the crease. Feet flat. The tendency is to flop your foot too wide so bring them in a little narrower than you thought. Inhale, using your deeper abdominals, rolling backward through the pelvis. As you lift for this first bridge, make sure that your hand weights are secured on the hip flexors and not rolling into your face. Arrive here, pull your pants up, inhale, and then come down slowly. Each vertebrae, 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 bone by bone, should have its own opportunity. Inhale to begin again. Scoop through the abdominals and pick up the tail bones, hip bones, spine bones, rib bones. Inhale. Come down slowly. Each vertebrae one, vertebrae one, vertebrae one, vertebrae at a time. Now we say that and what that means, your tail is pulled so that it's stretched and taut so that every individual vertebrae has its own moment. One moment, one vertebrae, one bone at a time. Here we go. Now I'm on my heels, which I can exemplify with my toes lifted, and I'll pulse, and I'll pulse, and I'll pulse your house down. I'm using my buttocks, by the way. Four, three, to arrive, melt, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, one vertebrae, like seriously, like, yeah, seriously, yeah, all the way to the bottom and the end. Bring the feet in a little narrower, yet there's so little space between my feet. Yeah, very little space. Prepare for one leg. I start on two. I'm up, single leg, extend, tap your toe, extend, tap. Extend, tap, extend, hold the extension, flatten your feet, fix the pelvis up, and melt your spine 
Down, down, down. Tighten the buttocks. Arrive and prepare. Two feet bridging. Leg number two, extend, tap, extend, tap, extend. Two more, extend. Hold the extension. Maintain the tone of the buttocks. Put your feet down. Fix the pelvis up. Melt. Don't hold your breath. Pull the tail forward, tail forward, tail pull forward. Arrive and then remove the hand weights and rest. Hug your knees back and feel the buttock muscles or low back muscles. Stretch. Embrace your legs. Hug your knees. Roll from side to side. As you go to straighten the legs, also relax your neck. Stretch the backs of the legs with a steady flow of oxygen. Inhale, knees bending. Lift, exhale, legs straightening. So each time, there's a flow of oxygen. Stretch. I like to think of it as like, like super highways of oxygen in the bloodstream. And you want all of this freedom to flow. Inhale, knee bending, exhale, leg straightening. I'm going to keep uh, one leg straight, well, they're both straight, but keep one and send the other. Flex both ankles, yikes, feel the stretch. Switch legs, feel the stretch. Lifting your head, be sure that you're not looking up at your foot here. Find that foot. Switch, catch, pull, switch, catch, pull. So your eyes are on the horizon, looking straight forward the over, the, over the plateau of your abdominals and thigh. Find your foot. So just four more. Three more. Here's two. Last one, grab both ankles. Rock and roll forward and back. And come to seated. Meet you here. Close and open a few times. And then, as I close, arms up, arms wide, arms front, I'm going to cross my ankles and go over my legs and walk back. Just going to knock out 10 push-ups here. No hand weights necessary. Let's put them out of the picture. I'll start on my knuckles with straight legs, and we're doing just 10. Here we go. One, two, Pull those abdominals in, maintain good form, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You push back into your downward dog, and when you splay your fingers wide, try to get some weight out onto the fingertips so that you're not so heavy in just the one spot at the heel of your hands. Push out with your fingers. Press the heel, I'm pressing one heel very heavily into the mat, and then my second heel equally, if not more, heavily into the mat. You can bend your knees and come on down to a seated position. Get your bearings, sitting up nice and tall. Oh, way! hope you're well. Sitting nice and tall. I'm pulling my head back intentionally, holding back several times. You may have seen this lesson before, in which pulling your head back will exercise the neck muscles and help you to straighten your spine. Your head is always on top. It's the reverse of clucking, like a, you know, like a chicken. Don't do the forward, do the back word, backward motion. All right, we'll do one more, keeping your head pulled back so that your head is stacked on top of the shoulders and stacked on the spine, on the ribs, on the pelvis, and we're vertical. Inhale, arms all the way up. Big exhale. I give you a round of applause. I thank you for coming and joining me. If you're watching this video on a different day and time than when it was originally broadcast on Friday, then please be sure to leave a note 
Let me know that you visited. Uh, let me know what you thought about some of the exercises or any one. You had a favorite? You had one that you don't like? Uh, tell me what you thought. Again, it's Vivian signing off now. This is the Friday edition of Short and Snappy Pilates with the Light Hand Weights. I'll be back again Friday, same time. If you're looking to do something on Tuesday at 11.30, live on Facebook, no weights, same Pilates, and 45 minutes. See you then.